Shalom Aleichem, everybody. We'll discuss a little bit of Hilchot Shabbat. It says, Yishkim Vaboker Yom Shishi Lachit Sanche Shabbat. A person should wake up on Friday morning, Friday morning, in order to be able to prepare everything that he needs for Shabbat. Even if a person has a few servants, he should try himself to prepare things for Shabbat. And he shouldn't say, I have people going to do it for me. No, it's a part of your kavod to prepare for Shabbat. In whatever way possible that you can, you should also be involved in preparing for Shabbat. Kol Hashem Shabbat. Anything that a person buys for Shabbat, a person should say, Zeh Lechvot Shabbat. He should say, this is Lechvot Shabbat. And when you say, this is Lechvot Shabbat, you bring down Kiddusha to this item. Whenever you say it, there's a certain holiness that comes down onto that item. The Fida Tariya Kadosh, according to the Ariza, which is a very big Mikubal, Everything that you need for Shabbat should be bought on Friday. In order that since you're buying it on Friday for Shabbat, there's a certain kiddusha, a certain holiness that comes down to those items. But if a person knows he won't be able to, then he can go back and buy it on Thursday. For example, you won't have enough time to buy everything on Friday or everything on Friday, so then you can buy it on Thursday. That'll also be fine. A person should not make less than two dishes for Shabbat. If a person during the week eats two dishes, then he should make Three dishes on Shabbat. Meaning to say, whatever you eat during the week, you should add more, but it shouldn't for Shabbat, but it shouldn't be less than two dishes for Shabbat. It's good to have fish also on Shabbat. There's also mitzvah, Erev Shabbat, to taste every little bit of food that you made for Shabbat, to take a little taste of everything, to see what you prepared for Shabbat. There's also mitzvah to take a shower Erev Shabbat, especially in hot water. Right? And a pi Kabbalah is preferable to go to the mikveh before Shabbat. When a person goes to the mikveh before Shabbat, it purifies the soul and is able to receive that extra neshama on Shabbat to a much higher degree, a much higher level. And like that, every time a person goes to the mikveh, one spark of his neshama that he lost when he didn't have error comes back to him. So it's very, there's a lot of other things also involved, but a pi Kabbalah should go to the mikveh of Shabbat. And also, a person should cut his nails Erev Shabbat. If a person can't do it every Erev Shabbat, do it every two weeks, but you should do it Erev Shabbat. And when a person cuts his nails, make sure that he flushes it down the toilet or at least he throws it into the garbage. But no, but you don't throw it onto the floor. Then just cut it and uh, if it falls, take it and sweep it and throw it into the garbage or flush it down the toilet. A person should clean the table, make the bed, make the house look very nice, very elegant, very pleasant. Don't leave the house messy. Uh, for when you come to the house on Shabbat, everything is a balagan. When you come to the house Shabbat, Shabbat should be spotless and beautiful. If a person works Erev Shabbat from Mincha and on, he does not have any bracha and that money that he's gonna spend, that he's gonna make. Right? What does that mean? From what time is that? That's two and a half hours, around two and a half hours before sunset. Around two and a half hours before sunset, from that time and on, already no more working. A person is allowed to start doing a certain work Erev Shabbat if it's going to finish automatically on Shabbat. What does that mean? That for example, if a person wants to water his garden, watering your garden on Shabbat, Easter door right on. You're breaking Shabbat on a biblical level. Watering uh, grass or watering flowers, that's considered you are doing it Easter door right. It's one of the malachot. It's zorea. Right? It's, it's same thing like planting is watering, you're making it grow. Right, and therefore a mela, and therefore you would be over in Easter. So, but if a person would want to turn around the water from Erev Shabbat and leave it to be on throughout Shabbat, that's fine, you didn't do anything on Shabbat, you left it on Erev Shabbat, just like you put food on Erev Shabbat and it cooks automatically through Shabbat, it's mutar. So to also this and so to everything else. A person is not allowed to have a big meal out of Shabbat, right? For example, a person wants to make a birthday party out of Shabbat at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, whatever it might be. A person is not allowed to make a birthday party out of Shabbat if there's going to be a very big meal, which is an unusual meal that he doesn't have throughout the week. But any meal that a person is used to and accustomed throughout the week, a person is allowed to have Erev Shabbat as well. However, from about two hours before sunset, a uh, person should already refrain uh, from eating because we want you to come into Shabbat with an appetite. We want you to eat and enjoy your Shabbat food. When you enjoy your Shabbat food, you're making a mitzvah. We want you to be kind and we want you to fulfill that mitzvah. It will be a zakut for you. Right? And therefore, they don't want you to come into Shabbat when you're full and you can barely eat anything and you forfeit the mitzvah of Onik Shabbat 
by enjoying your food on Shabbat to be able to eat, uh, you know, an extra meal before Shabbat when you should have done the other way around. So that is why should not to ayom. Say if you have a bit milah or pidyon aben or anything like that that day, uh, the it's better to do it before as early as possible. Right, the latest, 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 at least two hours. You should be done at least two hours before uh, sunset. But the earlier, the better. So then, a person should try to designate special clothes for Shabbat. A person should not wear the same clothes that he wears during the week for Shabbat. A person should have special clothes just for Shabbat. And also, a person should be careful that he should really dress up Arab Shabbat. Some people, they come Friday night to shul like they were dressed on a regular day. And the next morning, Shabbat, they change their clothes. No. Already Arab Shabbat, you're supposed to prepare two, three hours before Shabbat. You go prepare for Shabbat, you make sure everything is set up in the house, you go to the mikveh, take a shower, you put on your Shabbat clothes. If you could go to shul a little bit earlier, read a shira shirim, read some tilim, prepare yourself, daven a little bit, look at the sidur, uh, learn how to daven, learn to appreciate the davening. Use your Arab Shabbat time wisely. Come into Shabbat in a respectful fashion. Don't come into your Shabbat with uh, pants and shorts like you were just in the week. You just walked in there already after Kabbalah Shabbat. And, uh, and for Shabbat is to be accepted with a tremendous amount of respect. And so, the person doesn't have to have special shoes for Shabbat, but if he does, he'll, he'll be blessed. He'll have a bracha for it. If a person doesn't, at least shine your shoes before Shabbat. You come into shoes with shiny shoes. Some people, they come into Shabbat with weekday clothes, in the morning they have Shabbat clothes, and in the afternoon they're wearing shorts. I don't do such a thing. So that Shabbat has to be full Shabbat clothes the whole entire Shabbat. You should look respectful and dignified for Shabbat. Gam, Avel even a person's Avel Lo right, he should make sure that he changes his clothes to Shabbat in order to be able to look respectful and dignified for the Shabbat Kodesh. Have a good day and a good night.